Hey guys, thank you for watching this video. I'm Nick, I'm a lawyer at NKI Legal, and today we're going to talk about obligations both on employees and employers. Specifically, we're going to be talking about implied terms. At law, terms in a contract can either be implied or expressed. Now, an express terms are the terms that the parties talked about and agreed to and expressly are mentioned in the contract. So the contract can be written or oral. So most of the time, the express terms when it comes to an employment arrangement are the terms that are in the employment contract. The second kind of term that can be included in an employment relationship is implied term. Now an implied term is basically a term that the parties haven't discussed but is implied into the contract and implied into the employment relationship. So the most important thing to remember when it comes to implied terms and express terms is that an implied term cannot contradict an express term in the employment contract. So if the parties have discussed that subject matter and there is law that implies a term into the employment contract, then that term cannot be implied if it contradicts the express terms of the employment contract. In this video, we're going to focus on some really important implied terms that, are, that exist in our law. Now, the first implied term concerns the employer. Now, the employer has an implied obligation to take reasonable care not to expose employees to unnecessary risk of harm. So this is basically an obligation on the employer to provide a safe workplace. An example where the employer breached this term involves the case of the state of New South Wales and Seedsman, uh, which was handed down in the year 2000. That case basically involved a police officer who was required to undertake uh, police work involving horrendous crimes against children. And the significant issue in that case was that the employee in question didn't have access to professional counselling. And as a result, the employee underwent some psychological issues, uh, psychological harm. And the court held that the uh, state of New South Wales, being the employer, was held liable because they breached this implied term to provide a safe workplace by failing to provide the employee with professional counsel. Second implied term that uh, rests on the employer is fairly obvious, but it involves an obligation on the employer to pay the employee for work performed. Now, most of the time, this will be an express term in the employment contract, but if it's not expressly agreed or if the parties haven't got an employment contract in place, this implied term will bind the employer. Now the third implied term involves an obligation on employees known as a duty of loyalty. Now this generally requires the employee not to compete with the employer while the employment relationship is ongoing. Now what constitutes impermissible competition is a matter of some debate uh, and the decisions are not clear. However, the duty not to compete during the employment relationship usually extends to the obligation on the employee not to use the employer's time, resources and contacts during the employment to set up a competing business or to assist a competitor. Now while on this topic guys, it is worth mentioning that if you have a written employment contract in place, then it is fairly likely that there is a term in the employment contract, an express term, which puts an obligation on the employee not to work for anyone else and to provide exclusive service to the employer. So again, we're talking about implied terms and express terms. So it always comes down to firstly, reading the employment contract, working out the express terms, and then the implied terms fill in the gaps. So if the parties haven't discussed a certain issue, then there is a possibility that the implied term will govern the party's obligations. Guys, the next uh, important implied term when it comes to employees is that employees have an obligation, a duty, to keep confidential information of the employer secret, both during the employment relationship and after the employment relationship has ended. Now guys, what constitutes confidential information sometimes is a matter of debate. So I'm just going to give you some factors which the court has set down in recent decisions 
which the court considers, if it, these factors are in place, then the information is likely to be categorised as confidential information. So the information, firstly, must be the fruit of considerable skill and effort. So the employer has to invest time, money, resources into the confidential information for it to be considered confidential information generally. The confidential information must be jealously guarded by the employer and not acquired by others without considerable skill and effort on their part. Another factor is that the employee should usually be told that the information is confidential for it to be categorised as confidential information at law. Uh, another factor is that uses and practices in the industry must confirm that such information is treated as confidential. And another factor is that only senior employees with high level responsibilities should be granted or permitted to share in the information. So if some of those factors are in place, then the court would consider that information to be confidential information. And then there are implied obligations on the employee to keep that confidential information secret. And if there's a breach of that, then the employer could take remedies in order to prevent the employee from uh, revealing that confidential information or potentially even sue the employee if the employee has revealed, revealed the confidential information to others. So really important obligation that, that employees and employers should be aware of. And when it comes to confidential information, if there is an employment contract in place, that employment contract usually has extensive provisions that deal with the employee's obligations when it comes to confidential information. All right, guys, there are so many more implied terms that I can talk about. There are also more common express terms that I can talk about. So I'll be talking about these in future videos. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and check out our other videos. Thanks, guys.